Welcome back. If you're a regular viewer of this program, odds are there are one or two or a thousand things about Donald Trump and the Trump administration that have had you yelling at the TV at one point or another. There are the big things. I don't really need to repeat those, do I? But there are also lots and lots of little things. And I suspect our guest tonight, Alice Hennigan, has taken notice of more than a few. He's writing a column for Metro Papers called Trump's America. He's also got a new book out coming in November called Trumpetude, The Secret Confessions of Donald's Brain, one of two books he'll be releasing this fall. Now, in this segment, we're going to focus on the little things that Trump seems to do that are annoying so many people. Earlier, we mentioned Trump was in Texas today. Take note of the hat he's wearing, by the way. We'll come back to that. But at a fire station in Corpus Christi today, here's what the president said as he gave aid and cheer to hurricane victims. I want to thank you for coming out. We're going to get you back and operating immediately. Thank you, everybody. What a crowd. What a turnout. What a crowd, what a turnout. It's always about how big his crowds are, at least when it's not about him. Trump's tweet storm from this weekend, more about his efforts than about victims in the storm or how to help them. Remember that USA hat the president was wearing in Texas? That's an advertisement, folks, and not for the USA. Trump sells those hats for a cool 40 bucks each, just like his Make America Great Again hats, which probably shouldn't be a surprise given how much money the Secret Service has paid to Trump for protecting Trump at his golf courses and hotels. And every time he goes to one, by the way, that's another ad for those properties, which means more money for Trump. And finally, to one of my biggest Trump peeves, for all the questions that Trump's aides and staffers get about something cryptic or confusing this president says, we always get this. I think the president has made it very clear that if there are deadlines, he is not going to advertise those deadlines. Well, the president's been very clear. We cannot tolerate this kind of bigotry, this kind of hatred. I think the president's remarks were very clear. The president was very clear. I think the president's made it clear what his position is. That's not my question. As I've said, Hallie, I, the president's made it clear what his position is. I, it drives me to up the wall, that last one. If you tell me something and I keep asking you questions to explain it more and your response is, I made it very clear, by definition, you didn't. It's, <laughs> I, I don't know if he's being cryptic or if he's just intentional. What are your Trump pet peeves? I'm just well, curious. You know, I love that one, but but I, the secret plan. That's oh, one of my yeah, favorites. That's a good I've one. got a secret plan to beat defeat ISIS. The Taliban. No, no, I can't telegraph, but I wouldn't dare <laughs> tell anybody about it. And you get the suspicion after a while that maybe there is no plan. Maybe, maybe he's got a secret no plan. At maybe he's got all. a secret plan to come up with a secret. But plan. don't worry, I know more than the generals know. That's true. <laughs> but, but I'm just not going to tell you because I wouldn't want our enemies. Dom, what what's What's your Trump peeve? I'm trying my best not to get started. I really am. Because I really feel that we should play Ringling Brothers and Barnum, Barnum Bailey Circus music. Because everything with this man is the biggest, the best, the best crowd, the best answer, the best response. <laughs> and it's all show and nothing to back it up. Now, I've had family members tell me, my aunt that raised me to slow down on my criticism of Trump, mm -hmm. slow down. But I mean, and he's made a fool out of me because I've gone on TV shows, national TV and here, and said the man is not a racist. And I've had, you know how many people come up to me recently and say, Dominic, you put your neck on the line and said Trump is not a racist. Well, how do you explain Charlottesville? And how do you explain what he did with Sheriff Joe? And I don't have an answer. Can you believe that? Me, a guy that talks all the time, I don't have an answer? No, I can't. How do I get out of that? I can't, I can't believe that so, you don't so, an so the president has almost made a complete fool out of me. You know, like, it, and the reason being, Andrew, the, the few times I've been around him when it's been personal, he's never shown me any of this at all. And so, so either I was stupid and didn't see what was in front of me, or I'm stupid now. One or the other is not good. I don't know. Ellis, what's, what's in Trump's brain? I mean, that seems like a lonely place to be. But since you're writing a book on it. Trumpetude, get used to that word. It's going to be everywhere. Right, the secret confessions of Donald's brain. Is that the loneliest place in America right uh, now? Yes, also available in Russian, I'd like to be able to say, when, the, when that edition comes out. Uh, listen, we all know who cover this stuff all the time. You guys talk about it. You're out reporting it. But somehow or another, we feel like we still don't quite have our finger on the truth here, right? So, so, so what I decided to do, as well as hanging out with you guys and writing columns, was I teamed up with one of the most brilliant, twisted, uh, crazed illustrator, a guy named Randy Jones, very talented guy, stuff is in the Times and the Journal and other places. And we put this book together. And it is essentially, the construct of it, is that it's Trump telling you 
how to be like Trump. And you can imagine oh, some boy. of the crazy advice he would give. Like, like I'll give you one. But yeah, give me one. I want to be more like, I'm not going to say it. Well, so, let's so, let's so say I wanted to be more like Trump. You're a recently married man. Yes. Right? So, so what Donald might have a thought about that. He would say, and I don't know if you've lived up to this, Andrew, he might say that you should choose a wife who speaks enough English to follow your orders, but not so much that she expresses opinions. <laughs> Is that Donald or not? It's certainly not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, maybe may you've been not quite trumpetudinous enough. But, but so, so what we did, Randy and I, was we, we, we cast our gaze across so many of the things that Donald said. We, we have a translator of Trump into English. We have a, what Donald says and what Donald means and a whole series of devices that our hope, and I, and I hope folks will take a look at it, will provide a level of understanding of Donald that our traditional investigative and journalistic efforts have not. It's really the next kind of scary level. Are, are, are you having fun writing this or are you slamming your head against the keyboard all the time because I can't believe this is where we are right it, now? It has been a blast. The stuff has just been pouring out of me. Like any writer, I suffer, but this one has just been, uh, the, the thing is figuring out what not to put in the book. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, did we mention that Ellis has a new book coming out? <laughs> No, not that book, the other new Ellis book. It's the story of a young imposter who became president. No, no, no. He crashed parties and somehow found himself in the process. We're going to get into that right after this break.